Hello class, I hope you're doing well. Honestly, I personally miss the in-person sessions because I get your help to review the previous lectures. But it's okay, I'm just gonna give you a short review myself. In lecture 12, we went through process control and I gave you a few strategy to control a process. So our control variable is almost close to the set point. In lecture 11, we went through the system response to a change in one of its uh, input variables. In this lecture, I'm going to introduce you another interesting topic, and that is transfer function models. As I said, in lecture 11, we went through the response of a search tank to a change in its input flow rate. I know that going back to the search tank might be a bit repetitive at this point, but believe me, teaching new concepts I think will be best done through solving an example that we already familiar with and we are quite comfortable with. So for that, let me just uh, redraw the search tank in here. So I don't repeat the assumptions. They are all listed in the previous lectures. I'm just going to repeat that the governing equation that shows the relation between the elevation of liquid inside the tank and the input flow rate is. And in lecture 11, what we did was we introduced a little disturbance or deviation in the input variable QI. So we assumed at time zero and prior to that, the function was in its steady state and it was running at normal operating, which we define by QI bar. And then at time zero, there was a variation or disturbance in QI, which we show it by QI prime. And again, if you remember, we could uh, split the total uh, qi function into two terms qi bar and qi prime qi bar was the steady state response of the system which was at one meter q per minute and qi prime was an impulse function with a total area of 1.25 so the function was 1.25 delta t and QI was the sum of these two functions, which was something like this. And then we input this into the model for the system and obtained the response of the system, which was H. And the solution was... So interestingly enough, if we look at the composition of H, we can see that it also consists of two terms. So the overall solution was something like that. We know that during a steady state, the elevation is at one meter. But in case of a transient in the input parameters in the form of an impulse, the solution takes a form of this function. And we can easily split this function into two terms. One is H bar, which is the steady state or normal operating condition of the system. And H prime, which is the deviation from the steady state. And it's basically something like this. So in other words, I can also split the solution into two components. H bar plus H prime. So this leads me to defining deviation variables, which are defined as So the other terminology that we are going to use is our original variable QI and H, we're going to call them physical variables. And now the next question that naturally comes to mind is if we know the behavior of the system during a steady state, which is H bar, why not just solving for the deviation variables? So in other words, the equation that we solved in lecture 11 was equation for physical variables. 
which in case of transient was and in case of a steady state condition was so if I subtract the steady state equation from the transient equation this is what I get In addition, based on the definition of deviation variable, I can obtain the derivative of h prime with respect to time. I'm just going to write it here. And we know that h bar is the normal operating condition and it's constant. So its derivative with respect to time is zero, which leads me to this conclusion that dh prime dt is equal to dh dt and I can use it in this equation here so instead of dh dt I use dh prime over dt plus 1 over r and the term within the parentheses is h prime and the term on the right hand side is q i prime so effectively we obtained a new equation, but this time for the deviation variable. So from this point on, we're just going to follow our normal Laplace transform procedure. So I'll take the Laplace transform of the whole equation here. I just remind you that the prime in here doesn't mean that this is the derivative with respect to the time. Instead, it denotes that it's a deviation variable. The other thing that I have to obtain before I solve this equation is to calculate h prime at time zero. And for that, I just use the definition of h prime. So I can write here at time zero, h prime is h zero minus h bar. And since we assume that at time zero, the system was initially at steady state. So we know that this is also h bar, which means that h prime at time zero is zero. And this is one of the results based on the definition of deviation variables. And this was another outcome which we already used. So now let's go back to our deviation equation and replace h prime at time 0 by 0. So this is 0. And now if I rearrange the equation, I'll get and with one more rearrangement, I can obtain the ratio between h prime and q prime which is and if I just rewrite this in the standard form I will have so this is a very interesting equation because effectively it gives us the relationship between the input and output variable. So we have h prime of s in the numerator and q prime of s in the denominator. And on the right hand side, we have a function of s, which we are going to call it gs. And this basically leads me to the definition of transfer function. So gs is the transfer function which characterizes the dynamic relationship between output variable and input variable so in other words in this example h prime of s is the output variable q i prime of s is the input variable and the function on the right hand side which we 
call it gs is transfer function so now how is this helpful so if we find the transfer function for a system effectively we can find the response of that system or the behavior of its output variable to any type of change in the input variable for instance if i go back to the example that we solved in lecture 11 qi prime was this function 1.25 times delta t so i just write it down here and knowing the deviation in the input parameter i can just take its laplace transform to map it to the laplace domain so capital q i prime of s will be 1.25 and we know the laplace transform of the rock delta is 1 times 1 or 1.25 so this was from lecture number 11 so now all i need to do is to use our transfer function model just rearrange it to write h prime of s is g of s times q i prime of s and then substitute the transfer function first which is r over a r s plus one and then substitute the deviation in the input variable which is 1.25 so this gives me 1.25 times r over a r s plus 1 and again from lecture 11 we had a is equal to 2 meter square and r was 1 and the unit for r was minute per meter squared so if i put these values in the equation i'll get h prime of s is equal to 1.25 divided by 2 times s plus 1 and this is exactly a match to one of our expression in the laplace transform table so i can simply take an inverse laplace transform of this which results in h prime this time in time domain which is equal to 1.25 times 1 over 2 e to the power of minus t over 2 and this is 0 0.625 e to the power of minus t over 2 and again back to the relationship between physical variable and deviation variable the physical variable is the normal operating plus the deviation variable and we know that at the steady state the elevation of liquid in the tank is one meter so that is h bar and we just obtained an expression for h prime so we just write it down here and this is the dynamic behavior of the physical variable h and if i compare it with the solution that we obtained in lecture 11 they completely match okay apparently i made a mistake in here so this is lecture 11 let's see what's yeah, and the same thing here so this is also lecture 11 so the other thing i was gonna mention is about the shape of this transfer function and interestingly enough the standard shape of transfer function for first order linear odes is like this so we have the gain in the numerator and we have the time constant as part of the denominator so if you refer to the previous lectures for this specific example we had gain is equal to r 
and time constant was a times r so you can go back and check and confirm this so anyways the conclusion of this session is if we have a system that is initially operating at a steady state condition so the input variable and the output variable are at their steady state values and then all of a sudden there is a change in the input variable which results in a change in the output variable if we want to solve the transient equation for that system we can make it simpler by subtracting the steady state equation for the system from the transient equation that is what we've done here and obtain a new equation or a new set of equation which is basically for deviation variables and that's what we had in here and one of the properties of this type of uh, equation is that when we take its Laplace transform and simplify it, it actually simplifies to a very nice function which is called transfer function and it directly relates the output variable to the input variable. Then for any given type of change in the input variable, we can take its Laplace transform, plug it into the transfer function model and obtain a solution for the deviation part of the output variable and then the total uh, solution for the output variable is the sum of a steady state solution plus deviation I think with that we can conclude this session